Hello everybody, today I thought we'd go through yet another one of my containers of bulbs. Now this particular container, as you can see here, is full of electronic CFLs and some other novelty things, as you can see, like the star here. But um, the reason I decided to do some of these videos, other than just reviewing a single light bulb, you know, like I usually do, which I enjoy doing for you all, um, I thought I'd do a little bit on, you know, how I store these things and... Well, sometimes it's nice to just do a little treasure hunt, because being home from college, um, even though this video might be going up after I'm back at college, because I don't have much to do there for video content, so I try to do a whole lot of it here um, at home, because this is where all of my lighting things are, for the most part. Um, I only have a couple lighting things away at college there that I find unique, but like all these type of things are here at home. So, anyway, let's go ahead and open this container up and see what we find inside. This is all full of unique and interesting CFLs, and boy, this is going to be a fun thing putting all these back in here because they just barely fit right now. But, let's go ahead and get started. Here is a IKEA CFL. These have the uh, rubber coating on the outside of them. I believe these are made by Mega Man. Very cool little bulb. Here's another IKEA CFL. Again, another bulb that I believe is, was made by Mega Man for IKEA. Of course, now IKEA just sells LED bulbs, but unique. Here's a early three-way CFL. Now, my mom used to have two of these. One was in use, or well, they were both used in the same type of fixture. They were like torchy or up lights. Um, one of them uh, actually went out with a bang, and this one she just wanted to replace because she didn't want this one to go out with a bang so here it is in my collection now but it worked for many years and still does to this very day but now it's in collection here a marathon three-way alto but it has the very cool you know tube design to it here we have an early lights of america cfl now this one excuse me um you can replace the bulb from the ballast you know, you just pop it off, but I'm not going to do that because it's kind of hard to do. Um, here's an adapter. This is an adapter along with this one in the corner that goes with this bulb here. Now, this particular bulb, I have a whole bunch of brand new in the box, but it has a, I believe it's a uh, R30 or something like that. It's pretty big, but it's an 18 watt CFL. I don't know if this one is dimmable. It doesn't say anything on it um, about being dimmable. But I have a whole bunch of these that are in original boxes. This one just isn't. But a pretty unique, you know, it has a spiral um, plug-in bulb in it. Which, again, uses uh, these adapters right here. Very cool. Here is a nice Osram early uh, CFL. It is 20 watts, so it probably is trying to equal a 75 watt bulb. Or even a 100, which would be a big stretch. But... Maybe. Here's a pretty big Sylvania, 40 watt. Again, I think most of these things have videos, but look at the gap between the bulb and the ballast compartment for air to move. Interesting. I believe that one equals a 200 watt um, uh, incandescent. This is pretty cool. I think there's a video of this. Uh, um, what is it? Uh, Sunbeam. Used to make uh, these novelty bulbs. This was back from 2004. Wow. Long time ago. It's 7 watts, but it was, uh, I think it's a cold cathode tube. Very cool bulb. I'll set that off to the side so it doesn't get broken. Here we have a red Westinghouse mini twist. This is what their bulbs looked like when they first came out with the spiral design by Westinghouse. Now, of course, they're much, you know, thinner here. It's wider at the top. Pretty cool design piece of history there. Here we have another IKEA CFL. This one was also made by Mega Man for IKEA. Now look at this. This is how they put the tube together over here. And then right here, it's, you know, a, a turn instead of this. Now obviously, this is done because they can evacuate the tube and put the mercury inside. And they could probably use it for like a, I don't know, a different version of the bulb. But then they weld it here for the rest. And it looks very similar you know, to the Philips version. Really cool design. I think it works. Here's a pretty cool CFL. This one is pink. 
Um, you can tell, obviously, by the ballast compartment. But it has special phosphors inside to produce a very nice, bright, hot pink light. Very cool bulb. Here's a Biax by GE, a really early one, 15 watt. So probably equal to 60 watt bulb. This bulb's pretty cool. This one is a Philips table lamp. Now you can see it, they're using the same type of tube that they used with the preheat CFLs that came out before the electronic ones because, well, they could put that big globe over them and the, you know, a magnetic ballast could fit in here if they wanted to do that, but yeah, it's pretty cool. A very nice, unique piece of history, this particular bulb here. Very, very cool. Here's just a standard old um, 100 watt equivalent CFL. This one has 2005 on it. It says five year SAMS. I have no idea what that means, but somebody wrote that on there. Here is a Sylvania. It is 23 watts, probably a 100 watt equivalent. Very nice early CFL. Well, all of these are, or else they wouldn't be in my collection. An early three way Biax. That's pretty cool. Here's another Lights of America. Um, CFL. Let's see. Very similar to this one. It's probably the same darn thing, except, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it is the same thing. Just a slightly different generation of it, it looks like. Here is a yet another Lights of America. This one has a lot bigger base on it, but takes a smaller bulb, 18 watts. Um, these other ones took 27 watt bulbs that are over here. see this is a 15 watt Osram very nice I believe this is just a Fiat daylight bulb yep here's a another early Sylvania when they were trying to get them even more compact than these big guys here 15 watt so it would equal um, you know this guy so difference in time as things changed Here's another 20 watt Osram. Here's a pretty big bulb. This is an Aerotech 5000K 25 watt bulb. So probably tried equaling a 100 watt or maybe 150 watt incandescent bulb. Um, I got a lot of these used in a bag at the ReStore. They'll sell them in just a big bag, but usually they're quite unique. So I'll you know pick them up when they used to do that. This particular bulb here, used to be a floodlight by TCP, but um, I had it in a lamp and my grandma knocked it over and it broke. But the bulb itself still works, it just is missing its um, you know, floodlight. Be careful, there is you know, shards of glass when that type of stuff happens, but the bulb itself still works, so nothing wrong there. Now here's another one of those um, spiral PL adapters. Here's some tiny, um, that one's 7 watt. I thought they were 11. This one's 11. 11, 7. Hmm. I think I have more of these somewhere. How much is this? This one's 7. But this Osram one is 11. Must have been improvements. I really like how small these are. Very cool. Um, I guess we can put them together. You can have each variation here of the 40, 60, and 75 watt equivalents at the time. Pretty cool. Here's a Westinghouse flood bulb. Really weird. I mean, look at how round that is. You can tell they got the spiral right up in there. That's unique. I don't know where that came from. Here's a A19 shaped bulb. Let's see, it says Eco. It doesn't say what color temperature it is. Yeah, doesn't say a color temperature. I guess I'd have to turn that one on to figure it out. Here's a Sylvania, just a basic thing. Here's a GE, yet another basic thing. Here's a nice TCP, a really early one. Very early one. 2001 is my guess, probably would be about right. I really like these early CFLs. They lasted a very long time, the electronic ones. Here is a very early Lights of America Spiral CFL. 
I mean, look at that thing. Doesn't that just look ridiculous compared to like the ones that we had today? But that's what they were. Here's another one. I used to have an ex a bulb exactly like this when I was younger, but I believe I broke it. What a surprise. 25 watt, Lights of America. Pretty cool. It almost looks like one of those spiral Cheetos. And here's the generation that came after those two. It's again the Lights of America. But it's not the, you know, side entry. It comes right in the top. Here's a GE Biax. This one is the non three way version of the one that we saw a little bit ago. What is this? This is Walgreens. Interesting. A Walgreens Daylight. Huh. I forgot I had something like that. Here's some really green light mini CFLs, and they look the same as this Westinghouse one, except obviously not red. And at the bottom here is something pretty unique, except for this. This has nothing to do with it. This is a Westinghouse 20 watt one. That's interesting. I think I have one of these somewhere else too, but yeah. Very cool. But at the bottom here are some early um, electronic PL adapters uh, by Prolite. So they take these bulbs, which you can still get today. They don't come in the quad tube version like this. It's like four tubes in a row. They make them for those reading lamps. It's the same socket. Um, so it would work in here without a problem. You know, you just have a row of tubes, which would probably make more sense anyway. But yeah, that's what it would be. You can screw it into a lamp, you know, because the harp would fit around it, but then you'd have a dark spot on this side. I think like a light on the ceiling would make much more sense. But, um, yeah. Uh, this is a Panasonic bulb. And I think that's what they all are. Yep, Panasonic. And I think they're all um, warm white as well. Well, usually I'd put all these bulbs back in, but I've already taken enough of your time. So, um, I think uh, I'll do that after I end this video. So anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this video of my walkthrough of all these CFLs. Wow, a lot of history in the evolution of compact fluorescent lighting and the way that it ended with these really cheap, cruddy CFLs. These older ones were much, much better. Especially the preheat ones. Those are the best. But, like I said, once again, I really do hope you enjoyed. And also please comment, rate, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.